hope you're doing well. Um, hopefully, I'm going to be joined by Kippa, Pippa Campbell. Hello, Pippa. And she's going to request me in a minute. Now, we've got a ton of questions to get through today. So, um, yesterday, obviously, it took us about an hour and we got halfway through it. So, I'm hoping we can uh, plough through them all today. Um, Pippa, are you going to try and join me? Hang on a sec. I'm going to see if she could. She's not requesting me. Here comes my gormless mum face again. Um, Pippa, come out. Uh, here we go. Let's see Pippa. Hang on. There she is. Because we've got a lot of questions to plough through this evening. I hope you're not all comforting. Actually, I'm going to come clean. Today, I've eaten my own body weight in uh, bread. I don't know what triggered me, but, uh, well, actually, Matthew, Matt had a row with Matthew. He went to the shop. He came back with a big baguette, and I just get, get out my way. I'm eating it. Now, the trouble is, because I know there was a question here about sourdough. It wasn't sourdough. So I know I'm going to bloat on this one, and I'm going to feel really nasty. So, Pippa, hi, darling. Hello, I like your hair. Oh, th little do you know what? I'm going to have to do something with it. I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to go, I'm, I'm, do you know what? I'm going to go and get a box. I'm going to sort my roots out and I'm going to do my own highlights again. And I'm going to get some scissors to these split ends. See, highlights are really hard to do in lockdown, whereas you can dye your hair one colour much easier. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been doing my hair for years. I have literally had every hairstyle, disastrous hairstyle under the sun. <laughs> My mum was a hairdresser, so we always had bleach in the house. So I've always been... Oh, so you're... Around, you know. Um, you're yeah, yeah, I've just tied that. it back because it's just a disaster. So, hi, Pippa, how are you? Sorry, I got Hello, straight into it with gluten then. So here we are, round two. Oh, gluten, my favourite subject. Love, love talking about gluten. Thank you, everyone. Why gluten's bad, even if you're not celiac, and why? Because, I mean, we all love bread. I mean, I love it more than chocolate. Um, and... Why is sourdough okay? Um, well, yeah, get two, two questions there. So actually I'm not okay on sourdough either, but so if you really are sensitive to gluten, I am, I actually have the celiac gene. I haven't eaten gluten for years. And to be honest, if I, if I had carried on eating gluten, chances are I would have become celiac, but you know, we'll never know. Um, oh, can you, be, yeah, can you become it then? So you're not just born it? You can, you can. Yeah, no, so you can it. actually have the gene. So I've got sort of quite high risk profile. So I've got the sort of gene that could, you know, definitely become celiac. Um, but I haven't eaten gluten for so long that, and I don't really want to test it again, to be honest. Um, but I think, yeah, so you can sort of become it. So some people can carry the gene. So you can be at sort of, you have that risk profile, but it doesn't mean you definitely are, but it could be a trigger or something that pushes you then to get that autoimmune disease and with celiac disease it's then you know eating gluten um some people do tolerate sourdough um but some people don't so i think you know you what you just got to try it out yeah, but i get a lot of people saying that they're absolutely fine on sourdough but not on um just normal normal bread i mean if i had yeah i mean if i had a, a french a baguette I mean, my tummy would be out here. I, I, I used to feel like I was six months pregnant. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? But the thing is, what I've learned over the years of looking after my gut, if I do have a blowout, like I have done today, or I suddenly go, sack it, we're having a Chinese, and it's full of all sorts of nasty ingredients, or we're going to go to the end, we're going to have a takeaway. If I just sack it, and but my gut is in such good nick now that by... 24 hours later, you can get I'm, over back, it. I'm back in the groove and I don't yeah. hit that trajectory of just forget yeah. it and eat more and more and more. And I, you, do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I find that I've healed my, my gut lining so much that it's so you're okay. my brain and my thinking. Also, I mean, I find that, so tonight, what I'll probably do, I'll probably, this is me not being a doctor or a health practitioner. So this is what I find I do. I'll neck a load of activated charcoal tablets and I will also probably have um, some sort of detox tea and I'll just get it all out. Try and flush it out. And next time, actually, it's quite a good thing. So when I go out to eat and I don't know if I'm going to be glutened, um, I take a supplement called Full Spectrum Digest to help to break down gluten. So I'm not saying you should, everyone should just have that every time they eat gluten, but 
on the odd occasion, if you if you are intolerant to it and you eat out, it's quite a useful supplement. So I'll take that. Yeah, helps you know break down the gluten. Anyway, we've got tons of I've questions, got, and we were I've definitely got, I've got this, um, going off on one last night. Okay, right, let's sorry, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Okay, then here we go. Let's whiz through these. Okay. Yeah. How well, do can I just say, everyone? Um, can I just say I'm 46, so I didn't sort of explain that yesterday. So um, I am yet very, well, I'm not, I probably am sort of perimenopause. I don't have any perimenopause symptoms yet. I am still getting regular cycles. I don't have hot sweats. I used to suffer historically from very, very bad PMT. So I know I'm going to be that sort of hormonal person unless I sort of preempt it. So luckily I've done my DNA testing. Um, I've done Dutch tests, so I sort of know what, you know, what to do. But um, so I feel for you because I know a lot of you are in your 40s and you are, Bit younger than me, aren't you, Davinia? A little bit younger. How old 42. are you? 40, 42. There 42. we go. She's a spring chicken. Okay, so yes. <laughs> so Arrested that's development, I think. <laughs> okay, right. So, how does stress impact weight lo weight loss? Yeah. Okay. So I know we touched on that yesterday. Yeah. Um, but high cortisol. We talked about that cortisol belly. Um, now you don't have to have just high cortisol to have that sort of belly fat, it can be any imbalance in cortisol. Um, so we can't sort of assume that if you just, have, if you have that heart racing, that your high cortisol, if you can't get up in the morning, your low cortisol, you can actually have, um, you know, you could be up, at, up in the morning, down in the evening, or you might be down in the morning, you feel really tired and you can't sort of like wake up. Um, but then in the evening you might feel wired. So you can have a sort of curve where you're sort of too low. So you should sort of come up in the morning if you're looking at cortisol curve, and then you should come down later on the day as your cortisol should, levels should drop. Um, so that's why cortisol testing is quite useful, but I can go by symptoms as well. So it can be a bit of a mixed bag. But yes, so um, stress does then affect your ability um so it, so it affects your sort of like blood sugar control so massive affects blood sugar control um also as we were talking about yesterday you know when we we're talking about being in that fight or flight mode yeah um so when you're in that sort of like high course and your adrenaline everything's sort of pumping your body just doesn't prioritize digestion hormones anything else it's just just not a priority um, so it'll instinctively store the it's like a protective about, mechanism suppose, for in case of an emergency. Fat. Okay. Yeah, so, so you'll be less efficient. You'll be less efficient um, yeah, managing that insulin. And as, unfortunately, I mean, we do get, you know, a, a bad time, us women. But as we get older and we get into sort of perimenopause and menopause, then we are less efficient at balancing that insulin as well. It's a bit annoying. Okay, so, so um, then the time. I mean, basically, we've got a test test. Test, haven't we? Yeah, I mean, look, not, I know not everyone can do a test. There are various, various tests. So in the Dutch test, it gives us a really, really good picture. Um, the cheaper test is the um, saliva test, the cortisol te adrenal test, which is £86. But I think if people can stretch to the Dutch test, which we can look at all the female hormones, then that's great. Um, if I don't know levels and people can't do testing, that's where I think um, something like Stabilium is very useful, that supplement. But again, it's on top of... Um, you know, looking at sort of lifestyle factors. So if cortisol is an issue, you know, what is causing the, the cortisol problem, the high cortisol? So can we address that? Um, you know, sort of like um, little hacks. So like in the morning, um, if we can get straight out, see some sunlight. And if you can't see that sort of sun in the morning, then those light boxes are really good. You know, I've got mine actually in my alarm clock, but I've got a light box on my desk as well. So if you've got low cortisol in the morning, that can really help bring it up. Okay, so um, I'm asking, can you do these tests if you're on HRT? Yes, you can, but you then got to say, I have a lot of my clients do do the test if they're on HRT. So genetic testing is nothing's going to affect that because those are your genes. Your genes are your genes. It doesn't matter what supplements you're taking, um, any medication, your genes are your genes. It's how those genes are expressed. So that's what we go through the results and work out you know, what you should be eating, what supplements you should be taking, you know, lifestyle changes. The Dutch test, if you're going to take that when you're on HRT, um, then we just say, look, you're on HRT, you're probably going to stay on HRT. So this is this is what your levels are like on HRT. And then we can see, well, is it is it doing the job? Are you having problems still detoxifying that estrogen? So, you know, it's still it's still a useful test. Yeah. Okay, superb. Okay. 
How can drinking cow's milk affect my weight? Well, cow's milk, especially if it's not organic, um, you know, you could be um, exposed to some hormones there. So if you are going to drink cow's milk, I would always drink organic. Um, but it can be just quite inflammatory anyway. Um, so I would probably, if you sort of, um, you know, if you're looking at how it affects hormones, affect weight loss, I would actually just give it a go, cut it out for, for 28 days. I usually think 28 days is a nice sort of elimination time um, and see what happens. But it so can, if you're it go, can obviously, if you're going to go for the nut milks, there's a lot of people, well, there's a lot of manufacturers have jumped on the nut milk bandwagon and they've put really tons of sweeteners in, oh, nice. tons of thickeners. Now, there's a, a company called Plenish who have like yep. three ingredients, which is, say, almonds, spring water, and Himalayan salt. That's yep. all you need in it, and you just shake it up. There's so many, like that yep. Alpro, they've got tons oh, and tons like of Alpro. glutes in there. Always turn yep. the label around. I always read the label. Yeah. Count how many ingredients are in it. There should be the minimal ingredients, the better when you're doing nut milk. Yeah. And you, you know what? You could blooming well make your own now. You sat yeah. inside, make your own nut milk. I mean, I think if you're just going to put it in a protein shake or something. So I don't, I, I do make my own a lot. Um, and I make, I love, I sort of rotate between um, cashew nut milk and then I make a sort of almond and macadamia nut one. So, but the family, we like sort of like having a sort of cappuccino. So we get through that milk, but I probably wouldn't waste that in a protein shake. I'd get plenish um, because you can't sort of taste it. So if you're going to, you know, bother making it, keep it for your, for your best. This one, simple. Oh, losing I'm losing hair. my hair, help. Okay, it could be to do with thyroid. I'm obviously, I'm not your practitioner, so I don't know for, you know, for sure. I'd have to sort of look into that um, a little bit more. But um, things to look at are thyroid. Um, and then also I would be looking at sort of androgens as well. So, um, you know, that's in the Dutch test. So, the, the, you know, how testosterone could be playing a role as well. The, the most common um, thing would be th underactive thyroid. So, you know, if you can get that, a blood test at your doctor, I know it's a bit tricky at the moment, um, but, you know, or d the DNA testing can give us an indication of thyroid imbalance. It's not where you are now, but certainly your predisposition. What can she take in the meantime? What will help her with her... Because I know my friend Marie Reynolds, she has a, a really nice product. I think it's... I'll, I'll link to it, but her hair has grown and a lot of people... And it was for something completely different. I think it was like one of her collagen supplements. Yeah, and collagen I should link is really to it. for hair. And it's really, really... Because she cut her hair really short and like within six months it was down here and thick, you know? Yeah. So, so biotin is... Biotin is very good. Collagen is very good, but if thyroid is the problem and the root cause, then of course we need to address that thyroid. I'm not, I'm afraid I can't sort of recommend the supplements now because if it's not right for you, then I certainly do not want to be uh, recommending course, yeah. these supplements. You know, um, there are certain things like, you know, estrogen sort of supplements as well. There are certain things that I would really need to do that sort of in a one to one. But if, um, yeah, biotin is good, collagen is good, but if thyroid is the, the reason why you are that leaking that, the enzyme factor, then you need to address it. that. Um, you know, and is it that, you know, um, that's why sort of DNA testing, sometimes we can see, well, is it that, you know, there's sensitivity to TSH, or is it that you can't convert your T4, which is one of your thyroid hormones, to T3? Is it that it's not getting into your cells? So, you know, there's, there can be many reasons. Um, you know, is it that, Perhaps even this might be a time when, for some people, fasting works, but we might see that in DNA testing, maybe fasting for you, if you do have a thyroid problem, fasting for too long periods doesn't work. So I think it's very individual, but um, definitely look at thyroid. And it's Are common. all calories created equal? And can I eat all my calories as carbohydrates? No. <laughs> no is the simple answer. Right, okay. So um, you could eat, you know, Mars bar. I don't know how many calories in a Mars bar, I have to say. Or you could eat like tons of broccoli. So which one's going to be better for you? So calories are not created equal. We've already talked about the impact of sugar on insulin, which just, just pushes fat. So you could um, you find you might, might still lose weight, but you might not be losing any fat. But absolutely not. So the effect on your body of eating your calories as sort of carbs and sugars and things like that compared to nutrient dense foods, vegetables, proteins and things, completely different. So it will affect. And also, if health. you're going to put all your calories into carbohydrates, you're never going to feel satisfied. Yeah. You're always going to. 
I, I always find that if I, because if I have one slice of bread, like I have done today, I've had, after, after that one slice, I've had another six. Now, yeah. I wouldn't have one, like, chunk of salmon, or like, I just, because as a snack, I'll just have some smoked salmon, bit of avocado, squeeze some lemon on it, and just whack it down my mouth. Five minutes later, I forgot about food. When it's with bread, I keep going yeah. back. I wasn't even in the kitchen. I found my little slippered feet going yeah, back. Yeah. Well, we were talking about it yesterday, the sugar addiction, weren't we? And how it's eight times more addictive than cocaine. I mean, bread, you know, French bread, it's the same thing. I mean, you very rarely get somebody saying, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm addicted to broccoli. You know, it's, it's yeah, going it to be the same. Cost. It doesn't have the same. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, because like, obviously what addiction is, is when you can't stop, you can't stop something. You can't stop thinking about it. It's, it's in the forefront of your brain. It takes over your thinking. And then you're powerless over this action that you've got to have some more, whether it's alcohol, whether it's cocaine, whether it's gambling. It's, mm. or whether it's bread, which is also sugar, by the way. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it can take over your life. And look, just look at the obesity epidemic. Oh, lot I'm just going to grab a book for everyone. Hang on just a second. Do you remember our, our favourite man, Davinia? Robert? Robert oh, yeah. yeah. That's his, yeah, so that's his first that book. So he, he was really ahead of his time. I mean, this is yeah. ten, about 10 years old, this book, Fat Chance, but this is all about sort of sugar addiction. And you'll, you'll love it. Divinia, because it's all about you know blaming the you know sugar industry as well and all the uh, you know Kellogg's. Well, etc. this is it because somebody's just said here. I think I'm addicted to chocolate. How can I stop? So what? I mean, what? I wonder what sort of chocolate it is. It won't be seventy percent dark chocolate, organic chocolate, will it? Mm. Well, It'll... I think with chocolate it can be a different thing. So it's not just the sugar, but I actually I have seen some people ad you know addicted to sort of darker chocolate. And it's the caffeine, it's that fix, it's that high they get. And I think it's, it's quite the caffeine effect. Um, so anyone who's sensitive to caffeine, so that's coffee, that's um, tea, green tea, actually, you know, would have to be careful of as well. They could, they, the same thing with, um, with chocolate, they need to be careful with as well. So it could be the sugar, um, certainly if it's like um, Cadbury's type thing, but it could also be the caffeine. And what about crisps? Because that's my other go-to as well. Yeah, I mean, when I have, when I have crisps, I try and make sure they're only ever cooked in olive oil, which brings down the choice like this. Because yeah. obviously, I don't eat any veg oil whatsoever. It's highly inflammatory, it tends yeah, yeah. to trans fat. It's what they used to clean machinery with. So the only oils I have is avocado oil, coconut yeah. oil, uh, MCT oil, and um, olive oil. That's it. Yeah. So if you're having crisps, not only are you having those useless carbs, you're actually having this awful fat sunflower oil, yeah. which is just brutal. It's just for really weight inflammatory. Cuts everything with sunflower yeah. out. Get it out uh, everywhere. You should never have yeah. it. It's just, it's the so cheap It's not ingredient. just the carbs, but you're right. I mean, that's, um, they're just really inflammatory. And they'll make, yeah. you, they'll make you want more. I mean, they, 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 oh, they, yeah. put out sugar completely. No bring down all the inflammatory ingredients, and then you can probably navigate a bit of sugar and you can navigate. You don't love crisps. You're addicted to the combination that walkers have spent billions of pounds putting together to take money from you. I mean, it's literally just drug pushing, and this is it. You, you've got to get it out of your head that you love something. Yeah. No, you're addicted to a product that you're paying someone to give you. Absolutely. And this, it, it, yeah, it's true. These manufacturers know that this combination of sort of the fats, the sugars, you know, they, they know this is just a winning formula. And so if you have ever had sort of like processed um, sweet uh, puddings and things like that. So, you know, five years ago, they wouldn't have been as sweet as they are now because they have to keep putting more sugar in so that you get that same fix because you become dopamine resistant and your brain saying, oh, it's not giving me that same high anymore. They put more sort of sugar in and you're getting that high again. So they have to keep doing it so people are buying more. Just so, remember, yeah. you're not treating yourself. You're treating the pockets of a multi-billionaire in LA. That's what you're doing. Somebody is like, you know, having a great time on your lack of health. That's whenever I go in, I think, oh, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a big load of walkers and then I'm gonna have a load of Warburtons and then I'm not making them any richer by making me more unhappy. Thanks very much. Do you know what I mean? That's how yeah. I try. When I'm in the supermarket, I try and think like that. It's so. a good way of pushing it, though. It's sort of just like you're just making, you're just making like very clever people even richer. They're all having a great time, not having those products on their super yacht somewhere. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um, how do I enjoy a weight loss program? 
Right. Well, again, it's about eating real foods. And if you are eating on a weight loss program and you're just depriving yourself eating some ghastly kind of like shakes that you mix with some weird powder that God knows what's in that and a meal um, that's out of a packet, then you're not going to enjoy it. So um, I think if you're eating real food, you're having protein and vegetables. And of course, if, as long as you like those things, then you can make them interesting with it's interesting ways of cooking it. Like when you were making um, some bone broth today. So, I mean, good old fashioned casseroles. Um, Actually, you know, people do loads and loads them. of like really quite exotic sort of recipes. I'm not a chef. I'm pretty shit in the kitchen. I lose patience. I make a massive mess for something that's normally very poorly received. So if you have a look on Pippa's web website, she's got a load of really inspiring sort of um, recipes that like a restaurant quality that now if you're that way inclined, just switch over to yeah. that. And I mean, I, stuff. I, I yeah, love food. Yeah, you know, I do. Because, because I mean, at the moment, because I've got the kids here and Matthew's got his own strategy. I'm just literally scrambling eggs every day and just shucking a load of um, smoked salmon on top and avocado. Lovely. You know? Well, you and that's the fast it. food for me. It's done. Yeah. And then stupid Matthew comes in and sabotages my day by bringing a massive big two-foot loaf in and then I've gone and stuffed my face. It's all his fault. But you don't have to be a chef. I'm not a chef. I'm just a home cook. It's just I was brought up in a very, very foody household. Um, so my mother's Hungarian, and anyway, she just was trained herself to be like this cordon bleu chef and everything. So I still grew up with being quite a foodie, but I'm not a complicated chef. If you have a look, um, well, I'm not a chef. If you have a look at my website, the recipes are generally really simple. I've just made them exciting with loads of different herbs and spices. And I recommend everyone look at a website called Seasoned Pioneers. So they have tons of spices and they're literally, some of them are ready-made spice mixes. So, I mean, it's like idiot So you just chicken. shove it on the chicken and chuck it in the oven. Oh my God, shove it on the chicken or you can make a curry with, you know, literally you can reinvent the same curry every Friday night, but with a different spice mix. You've just got your onions, your, your garlic, your turmeric, your ginger, then this particular spice mix, whether it's korma, whether it's jalfrezi, whichever one, you know, your coconut milk, and then your protein. So you're just kind of reinventing the same thing. I think mothers get, we get, you know, everyone gets bored as well of this daily cooking. And I think things like this sort of classic tray bait where you've got chicken pieces in and you throw in some veg or sort of potatoes. Again, get a spice mix, just do a different one. So if your children like spice, you go for Cajun, you go for a Zatar, but have a look at that website because it just makes, uh, it makes life just so much easier if you can just get some and flavoring. And you know what, as well, regarding the kids, I'm just not doing taking orders anymore. I'm just going to say, <laughs> if you don't want it, don't eat it, and you're not having any snacks, that is what's on the table. Yeah. If you're hungry, you'll have it, then go and play. And I'm just rolling it back. I'm not taking orders. I'm just, you can see I'm up to here. No, you can't. Kids. I mean, you know, I mean, you've, you've got four children as well, but, you know, some flexibility. I mean, I've always like, um, so my, my daughter doesn't like sweet potatoes. My son does. I love sweet potatoes. I don't really eat normal potatoes that often. But, you know, so, I mean, we, I might throw in half and half, you know, so somewhere you can be a bit more flexible. I might do a chicken and rice I'm not dish flexing like a, anymore. I'm not yeah. flexing. So I'm sick of <laughs> she's not, she's had enough. Um, I like cooking, so, you know, it's all right. But I did a big chicken and rice casserole yesterday that was easy, sort of Spanish rice thing. Now, I don't eat grains because I just, I find it quite inflammatory for my gut. So I very rarely eat grains. But I just picked my chicken out and I had it with some quinoa on the side. So you can cook as a family for your whole family meal. And then if you wanting, if you're wanting to lose weight or you can't, can't eat certain things, you know, you pick out your protein and you have more veg. So it doesn't mean you have to have all the rice and the potatoes that, you know, they're having. You know, children need all those carbohydrates, but we don't need, you know, quite as much. Yeah, we don't need as many, um, do we? Okay, yeah, but so, so, to enjoy a weight loss program as well, I tell you what helps, when you get results quick. Yeah. That I don't care what anyone says, like, oh no, you've got to take it for six months. As soon as I see things shifting, I am in the zone. So, yeah. and I can do that, by implementing biohacks. So one of my favorite biohacks is the cold. If I want to get rid of some excess body fat, I will shove myself in a cryo chamber or sit in a cold bath for three minutes every day, twice a day. Trust me, your body will react and you will shift body fat. 
And that's it. I mean, no doctor will tell you to do it. Look, but most I, of us have got a bath. So I have to say I haven't done this yet, but I just, just because I keep forgetting, but we should do it. Look, we can all I'm just sit in a nice minus bath. Minus 110 degrees for three minutes. It's ridiculous. But I really, I, I, I trust the, I mean, just read, if you just read some of the information on cold exposure, you will see no, no, so exactly. many benefits. And including that is fat loss. It revved up my yes. metabolism when I completely plateaued, you know? Mm. So that is something to look into. It is. There's a lot of scientific research to do that. So get in your yeah. cold bath. And then in the evening, when you want to get your relaxation, have your nice hot bath with um, Epsom salts. So lovely magnesium relaxing um, salts going in, being absorbed into your body. And that's your, your evening routine. So there we go. Definitely. But obviously for me as well, if I wanted to lose more weight, I'd start because a lot of it, when I was really overweight, a lot of it was water retention as well. So I was yeah. drinking a lot of um, sort of uh, diuretic teas. So that would be, you can get a big bag on Amazon of horsetail tea. And uh, it basically, it doesn't taste brilliant, but you do a big massive jug of it and you just keep drinking it and it gets rid of all that horrible water you're retaining. It's yeah, really, really, really good. Good. And I think you've got to drink a lot of water, you've got to flush out. This is quite good. Sometimes people don't get enough, have enough electrolytes, and that can be a problem. You find that you're drinking a lot of water, but actually not weighing much. Then um, something like this, Eli, which I think you've got, Davinia, yes. uh, it's very good for after sport as well. But um, sodium, potassium, magnesium. So just think so electrolytes. If, would you be able to put Celtic sea salt in water as well if you can't get hold of that? Yeah, you could. I mean, you're not going to get um, the other minerals, but yeah, I mean, certainly, um, you know, sodium. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can do your exercise and then have a cold bath. Actually, the study saying that if you did it the other way around, you did your cold bath first and then did some weights, you'd actually gain more muscle mass. So there's a few, there's a load of studies out there with conflicting evidence, but you can do a cold bath whenever you want and you don't have to have it ice, ice cold. The water temperature is pretty cold still at the moment. So take advantage of that. Just fill it up get in it for three minutes and make sure you breathe out more than you breathe in. So you go <sighs> like that. That was nice, wasn't it? So I'm yeah, talking about exercise, try actually. losing water. To, sorry? I'm talking, oh yeah, yeah, say that and then we'll okay, so, about exercise. So, so basically when I, when I enjoy a weight loss program, it's when I see results fast. So yeah. basically put every other biohacking thing you can in place as well as your dieting because you're going to see the results two plus two equals five in biohacking so if you do the cold exposure if you do the grounding if you take away the emf in your house you're going to reduce all that inflammation in your body and your body's going to detox all that extra weight much much faster as well as following a really good diet whether that's a keto diet or a paleo diet it depends People will probably put you in the right direction if you're serious about this. I'd definitely get a DNA test and you can see what your ancestors would have done to be optimal. Okie dokie. Oh, I always lose weight initially on a diet and then it stops. Why? Yeah, so I think we were talking about that yesterday with some of these sort of, um, you know, what the package sort of diets and things that you get out of a packet. Now, if a lot of people will lose a lot of weight initially. So you might find the first couple of weeks that is the major weight loss. But after that, you should sort of be losing sort of on average um, about two pounds a week. But if it absolutely stops... That's a fat, isn't it? That's a fat. That's not water. Yeah, not water, no. But uh, if it does stop after that, that's when I think there is some underlying issue or perhaps you're on the wrong diet. Perhaps you're not boosting your metabolism. So you lost it initially because you just... We're reducing so if you're calories. On a calorie controlled Weight Watchers diet. Yeah. Let me guess. So you do it for six to... weeks, you lose two stone, and then what happens? You stop. Yeah. So then you see you stop, you start eating normally again. But if there's still sugars in the diet, if you're not eating enough protein, you, you, you need protein to sort of fuel your metabolism. So it's like to, you know, to burn that fire. So you absolutely need that protein. Um, so I would, yeah, I'd be looking at perhaps you're not on the right diet or. Um, you know, any underlying factors to why. So, I mean, I have seen before occasionally people sort of lose weight and then it's slowed down and we've sort of then done some tests and found there's sort of more, there's a thyroid problem they didn't know about. Um, sometimes it can happen the other way around if there's a thyroid problem, actually. It might be that they hardly lose any weight initially. And then as the inflammation and things are reducing, then you can start burning fat. So sometimes I have seen it the other way around, but generally people lose more weight right at the beginning. Um, but don't expect to lose 
that sort of like, say if you lose eight pounds in that first week, it's just not realistic to expect that you're going to lose eight pounds a week from there on. That, you know, sorry, that just doesn't happen. But if you can consistently lose weight, um, you know, then that's great. How much protein do you think in a day for your average woman? Say I'm like five foot five, five foot six. I'm okay, currently about so nine and a half stone. So, so how I go on kilos. So I think for you, Tavinia, because you are working out a lot, you've got I did nothing muscle. today. That's why I'm in a piggy, piggy mood. I didn't um, so I would say Ow. for you, 1.6, maybe even 1.8, but maybe, yeah, 1.6 grams of protein per kilo of body weight. So for you, you know... You're talking about gram, the equivalent. 70 you know, grams of protein. 20 grams per meal. Uh, 20 grams is like a chicken breast or um, a fish fillet, you yeah. know, or then you've got some protein powder at breakfast. So you, you can't yeah. just look up your protein at night. So you can't just say you couldn't have just, you know, like a massive, enormous steak like that, and then that's you for the day. You do need to drip free pro protein, unfortunately. You do need to. So um, if you're just having two meals a day, yeah. you can still do that if you're intermittent yeah. fasting. Yeah. You can. So whilst um, I'll probably have, when I break my fast, I'll probably have a big lump of smoked salmon, like I said. I'll have some eggs. Then I'll probably have, um, that'll be about four o'clock. Then I'll have my main meal with the family at about seven o'clock, which will be chicken or if Matthew's done a steak. And then to finish off, like a dessert, because we all like that chocolatey taste after, after food, I'll have myself a protein shake and I will roll into bed like a satisfied customer like a little hippo because she's only but you remember she's I'm ready for then because i'm totally fueled yeah. you know well you've been running around after four children you've run for for an hour as well yeah. <laughs> and you've been making your bone broth and so she eats well which is great is um, anybody else's house like a bomb site like oh god cannot... i was thinking of i was thinking of mentioning that tonight as well it's just that i can't i can't cope with this cleaning i'm box. literally like I, I don't even want to turn the camera around no one picks anything up what is it about just dumping everything i've stood on lego thousands of times anyway i digress so yes yeah how do i stop yes. the 3 p.m sugar cravings is it right. sugar craving or what Okay, so we need to look at breakfast, what you're having for breakfast. We need to look at what you're having for lunch. So we need to look at those two meals before and why you're craving sugar then. So is it that you're spiking your insulin, insulin levels are dropping, or is it that cortisol is dropping then and actually you're looking for a sort of energy fix? So I think that's what we'd need to work out. Because what I normally do, because I find that I, I generally don't eat food, but I do take on calories throughout the day because I'm having um, MCT oil. So I generally find that a bulletproof coffee sorts me out at three o'clock and I will have an L-theanine tablet with it because then it doesn't infringe on my sleeping later on at night at all. That L-theanine just cuts out any of those, that insomnia that people get with uh, caffeine. So it's a really good hack that if you're trying to lose weight and you just want to have a coffee, have a black coffee with an L-theanine tablet and you'll be okay to sleep that night and it will just charge you through the last part of the day in the office or at school or the school run or homework or whatever. Yeah. Oh, what's that? What's I mean, you're, you're only slightly sensitive anyway to really, for um, can't say your name now. <laughs> so you're only slightly <laughs> sensitive to caffeine. Tuesday. So you don't have a huge, I'm, re, I'm very sensitive to caffeine. So actually I couldn't have a bulletproof coffee or, or coffee in the afternoon. It would affect my sleep. So it also depends on how sensitive you are and how quickly you do. I mean, just try it. We've, like, we've, all, we've all got the opportunity yeah, to start trying right now. You don't, have, you don't well. have a deadline. You've not got a school run in the morning. You don't have to get yeah. into the office. So try it. Get some... Is Holland and Barrett still open? Oh, no, they don't sell it. Holland and Barrett don't sell it. That's right. You'd have to order L-theanine off the internet. And I really rate a company called Viridian. Viridian they do a nice Health. one with lemon balm. And that's the one with the lemon yeah. balm, which I think is antiviral anyway, isn't it, lemon balm? Yeah. Uh, and it's, my... yeah, it's it both, basically, both are working on GABA. I mean, the one I take is called Zen, but you can only get that from America. So it's got GABA in. So it's GABA and L-theanine. It's like a real... So um, I don't use it very often. I don't need it. But if I had to do presentations and things, so I'll take a couple of those just to... So, the... yeah, I reckon if you think that you're really... If you, if you really want to try sort of like a bulletproof day like I do, 
get some L-theanine as well, just so you don't get, and see, see how you go with it. Now is a great time to start experimenting with your diet. And if you bite it, write it. I know it's one of those flipping things from like up north where my nan used to go to diet, like, uh, club and if you bite it write it Joe and if you bite it write it just like that but it really helps because you do when I was doing a food diary when I had my first poo test because I was doing an elimination diet years and years ago really arduous stuff I remember realizing how much I pick so if you have to write it down you can really notice that you have a handful of almonds here and then you have a handful of grapes there but your mind will just tell you, oh, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's just great. But it's still spiking my insulin and it's still doing something to my brain. And it's, if you do actually write it, you go, bloody hell, yeah. I'm a little picker. I think food diaries are brilliant. I mean, it's amazing how, how much you realize you're not, you know, so many people, mothers are picking on their children's food and things like that. I mean, it's amazing. You're just quickly grabbing something. I think food diaries can be really um, enlightful. Yeah. Oh, someone's just saying about Holland and Barrett products are highly toxic and cheap and all from China. To be honest, I do concur with a lot of their fillers. I do agree with you on that. But unfortunately, most people don't live in central London and don't have the luxury of whole foods and planet organic. And if I was like in the middle of nowhere, if I needed, like, if, I suppose if, when I went up to Manchester, for example, I couldn't find a health store and I wanted some kombucha because I was on a night out and I wanted something else because I think, what did I have? I don't, I don't know what I needed, but they had it. They don't have the best, best ingredients, but it's like, it's just, a, it's like a quick fix. You can go in there. And I think as the wellness industry takes off, I think Holland and Barrett will start up in their game. They do sell a nice brand called Together Health, actually, that's got some really nice um, vitamin D in, and I think they've got a nighttime blend as well. So I think they are up in their game. But I know what you mean about Holland and Barrett. I, I think just came with yeah. Soul Bar as well. I don't, I'm not I think if Soul you're Bar. going to buy that supplement that Davinia just mentioned uh, with lemon balm, the Viridian one, L-theanine and lemon balm. So I think Viridian out of the all the retail black brands, I think it's, it's, a, it's not a bad brand, actually. Um, I obviously don't buy retail um, products, no. but um, it's not a bad brand. Yeah. But I mean, Viridian, they're not, Viridian again, you can, you can mm. get it in Planet Organic, but you, you, can't, you can't get it really that often in, in Holland and Barrett. I do go into Holland and Barrett just to have a nosy. They've got a, quite a nice protein in there called Amazing Grass, which is a peanut butter one. And sometimes they have two for the price of one, and I'll just pick it up because Jude will have it in, like, his ice cream or whatever, and I'll just up my protein with it and just to get some green vegetables down me but uh, as a whole it's 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 all right it's just like going to your spa really i guess or like a tesco it's very high street, yeah. but it's handy um, and amazon sell um so a lot of my clients i find and i've been recommending for years as a sun warrior warrior blend protein powder yes. um and you can get that on get that on amazon a lot I of people get on got well that that. Barrett as well if memory serves me right some of them they? yeah okay. So I think they're getting better. They're up in the game, but I know exactly what you mean. Okay, what are we allowed to eat or drink on a fast? Okay, so no calories, but so if you're going to have any calories, it would be like MCT or a, bullet co a bulletproof coffee. Um, but you absolutely, like we were saying yesterday, no almond milk, um, no sneaky teaspoon of almond butter. Um, no no sorry, smoothies, no, no green fast, smoothies. Then you no, have to nothing fast. And the reason yeah. why I... Uh, but you can I, have I go do a well. traditional zero calorie fast is because mentally I don't think I'm I'm strong enough to do that. So if you can do, do it. But personally, um, I just need to stay away from picky foods. And my armor is getting MCT oil into my brain as fast as possible, along with a little bit of caffeine, and then I'm out the door. Obviously not out the door at the moment, but my mind has taken a t left turn from croissants and uh, Weetabix and toast and all this sort of thing. So that's my artillery when it comes to combating breakfast snacking. Yeah. Um, people and ask otherwise, you can have lo well, you can have any herbal tea you want. Yeah. Um, brands of coffee. Um, do I think everyone, it's a bit like, yeah, I mean, I, I think everyone likes their own sort of different coffee. Um, I like a brand called um, Superfly that I get on Amazon, and they do a bulletproof style coffee, so it's mold toxin free. What do you What do you like, Vinny? What coffee? Well, do you I mean, like? I'm kind of I I just grab an instant one. Uh, they sell it in Waitrose. It's the turquoise bottle called Clipper. 
and basically oh, it's just in, it. in in and do you know what i need to show you as well because some people are having like yourself included get a bit of um a, a funny tummy with the oil don't they mm -hmm. so i've been using this they sell it in planet organic and online it's nutriva nice. and it's mct powder, powder. basically all it is, it, it just look, it's just white powder and it blends really easily in your Nutribullet or even with a, you don't necessarily have to have a Nutribullet. So yeah. this, I've been very interested to see because this is made from, it's got prebiotic uh, acacia fiber and it's, it's, it supports ketogenic and paleo diet and it, it's got zero carbs in it as well. So I'm wondering, because it's got mm. that extra fiber in, Will that help people who normally are a little, get a little bit of gastric problems with the oil? It may so, help for people who have uh, the gut issues, maybe not if you have a bile issue, but it might, it's worth yeah. trying. Yeah. It's really, I love it and I'm running out and I'm like, oh my God, they don't sell it in Spain. I'm like doing little bits. Little you know what, I might, I might just get one of my mates to send it to me, DH. Yeah, it's why don't you send you some? It's gonna cost me, it's gonna cost me 35 quid to put it in the post. And this is 30 quid anyway. Oh, anyway. Well, you're just a problem. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, right, okay. Where are we? Where are we? Okay. Best time to exercise to lose fat and what type of exercise? Well, ah. that depends on what kind of person you are. What does your circadian rhythm naturally do? So, Pip, do you want to um, explain about... Um, the night owl and yeah. the morning lark. Yeah, so time of day can be, the best time for you to exercise can be dictated by your natural um, circadian rhythm. So we can see that in, in DNA testing, whether you are an early bird, whether you're a night owl, or you have something called an in-betweener, which I think is so lucky, I'm so jealous you are. Now I'm an early bird, um, that means I suit exercise and I get better performance from exercising in the morning. Now in terms of uh, weight loss, if people are thinking about weight loss and um, also sort of, I suppose, g uh, getting as much muscle as possible, getting the benefits from exercise, then as close to your next meal as possible. So in a fasted state is always better. But for me, that would always be exercising in the morning. So either first thing in the morning or close to lunchtime. What about you, Davinia? Okay, you so I always exercise now on an empty tummy apart from uh, a bulletproof coffee. Um, if I eat, I don't feel like running. I can feel it sloshing around in me. I will extend my fast until I get into the gym. Um, little known fact that most people on residual energy can run for about 15 kilometers before they need a refuel. So all that pre-workout drinks and everything, again, you're just falling into the market yeah. slang of it and you're making someone else very rich. It doesn't power you through an exercise. Caffeine will help you power you through. Certain aminos will help you power through. But exercise begins up here. It's a mental game. So every, every step you take begins in your brain. Don't start thinking, you know, this is, a, this, is a, this is mind over matter. So for me, I'm better if I exercise in the morning. Um, I... I'm definitely more of a morning morning person. That's when I've got my cortisol levels up. That's when I want to do stuff. So I basically, I, I do a nice run or something. I get myself into that euphoric state, listen to a load of house music, and the whole day takes a better trajectory. Um, if I exercise in the afternoon, obviously I'll have extended my fast much later, and I won't, have, I won't feel like doing so much high intensity because then I could end up in an inflamed state and do myself some damage. So I won't do that. I'll yeah. just go for a long cardio run. Um, if you want to burn fat and you're overweight right now, best thing you can do is get a treadmill, hire a treadmill, an incline and walk on it every day for one to two hours. And I'm not being in, you've got to, you can still text people. You can still talk to people but you will sweat like a lunatic. But one thing you've got to remember, you cannot outrun an inflammatory diet. All these personal trainers you're going to see that charge you 70 quid an hour, you take them aside and off the record say, how much is it of diet, how much is it of exercise? It's 90% diet, guys. 
So yeah. when you see all these people on Instagram doing the working out and everything, and they look great, trust me, it's not the running they're doing or the Pilates they're doing, it's their friggin' diet. That's where it starts. It's just that you feel a little bit better going to the gym. Mentally, it safeguards me against my carb addiction, my alcohol addiction, my yeah. sugar addiction. That's what it does for me. And you and can you know what? If I gain a bit of muscle, if I gain yeah. a bit of muscle, great. But you know what? I'm in the gym for my brain more than my body because my body is looked after by the food and the supplements I put into it. Mm. And I think you can, a, you can go to a personal training, you can tick that box, yes, say I've been to the gym. Um, but, you know, it, in some ways it's harder to control what you're eating. But when you have, you will feel really in control. So I have clients of women who, you know, highly successful and they've got children and they're running their house and they've got control over all aspects of their life but not their food okay so because don't it's the world, the one. it gives you that false sense of security it gives you a cuddle yeah. you know it's desirable it's constantly advertised there's billions and billions of pounds invested in it it's a drug addiction and until we start realizing it's not a treat you don't deserve it you don't deserve to feel shit the next day that's yeah, my whole i know there's loads um, of good food out there, but there's so much packaging. I mean, just look at Uber Eats and everything. It's just constant, constant. I mean, are those guys still operating? Surely we could train them to run ambulance, to drive ambulances. Do you know what I mean? But no, they're delivering pizzas. It's just crazy that we think, you know, that the, the beginning of our health is food. And, and it, you know, <clears throat> and it makes you feel better when you know you've not, because look, look how I'm raging today because I've eaten a load of shit. Yeah. She is raging, isn't she? <laughs> She's okay. raging. Oh, let's rage with her. Okay, so <laughs> what are we going to do? So it's a vicious cycle. You eat something like the French bread and then you feel angry and you feel down and you just like, but you know what? You can change that now. You can change it tomorrow. So you know that you feel really down and depressed after you've eaten that. So actually that's the worst thing because if you're going to do it, just make sure you really, really enjoy it and you don't feel guilty. But what I'm saying is that you can change your mindset from one day to the next. You can say, right, that's it. I'm feeling so low, feel awful. I'm not going to then reach again for more of that bread today, which is going to make me feel really bad again. And it's this cycle. Literally, you could wake up tomorrow and change how you feel. Within 24 hours, you could just already feel better. So I think just I, to I, have that. I, I, I will do because I know what I didn't do today. I didn't jump on the treadmill first thing. Uh, I, started, I started trying to tidy up this mess of a house. And I just started facing my tail. And instead of make, putting myself first, I started putting the kids' environment first. They don't give a hoot. They're sat in the same underpants as yesterday. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, you don't want to do that. We don't want to oh, run a tight like shit, TV. don't I? You know, come on, everyone. We don't want to see her like this. We want to see her back on her treadmill. So the same for all of you as well. How powerful and how, you know, how are you feeling so, so in control um, if you can sort out your food tomorrow? That's a, that's a really powerful feeling to feel in control of what you're eating, not to the point I of mean, being it's upset. True. It's true. I mean, um, it, it is. I know exactly yeah. what to do to get back on track. I just need to explain to people that I can fall yeah. off the wagon quite easy. And it's so easy for me to now know that I've got the confidence to just get back on that treadmill, do a nice quinoa salad, have some avocado, drink my bulletproof coffee, have a glass of kombucha, and you know, I'm back on track. But I remember back in the day when I couldn't get off that wheel and I just woke up every morning. I didn't know about bulletproof coffee. I didn't know about good fats making me feel satisfied. I didn't know about intermittent fasting. I didn't know about hot and cold exposure. And I was just a slave to the, all these products. Anyway, let's crack on. And blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. Can gut health affect weight loss? Wow. Yes, absolutely. Where do I start with this? This is a whole another Instagram live sort of discussion. Um, Actually, that's a really good point. We yeah. should do a whole hour dedicated to the gut. But is if you could do a two minute nutshell, we will yeah. do an hour one on this next week because this is yeah. my favorite, favorite yeah. topic. Okay. Yeah, it is. Let's do another one on that because absolutely. Um, and it might be you don't have enough good bacteria, but it might be that you have too much bad bacteria. It might be that you're not breaking down your food. It might be that you have leaky gut. So 
that this is a huge topic. So yes, in, in short, um, it will affect it. And I've seen people with bad gut bacteria who've been on perhaps antibiotics and things like that. Um, and that absolutely hinders weight loss. So you've got to make sure you get rid of that first. And then I've even seen things like, you know, Diet Coke. Oh, God, I, I mean, I can barely even mention that word, but full of sort of like, um, you know, the sweeteners, which the brain sees are sweeter than sugar. So they're even right. worse, actually. And that really affects gut bacteria. So sweeteners, get off those sweeteners now. I mean, I, I am guilty. And I'm, I I'm not guilty, actually, but I do have stevia. And I only have a specific brand. Oh, no, that's all right. That's Nick's not the chemical, stevia, it? but I don't have their original. Mm. It has to be with vanilla in my coffee. Mm. Otherwise, the stevia that's on the shelves is like, Ugh, sweet, sweet. But the Nick's one, it's a yeah. Scandinavian company, and they're doing really well. They're, they're selling sugar-free chocolates and stuff. Unfortunately, they've got a nasty oil in it. I think they've got sunflower or rapeseed oil in it. Mm. But I'm going to write to them and, change, and tell them to change it. Yeah, but <laughs> stevia is natural. That's a natural... <laughs> Thing. So I'm talking well, about they're, 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 they're really the trying to combat, like the trying to get into the um, into W. H. Smith and stuff. You know where all the the, the Cadbury's chocolates are. They're trying to get in there. So it's like an, uh, a stevia chocolate instead. Instead, so look out for Nick's, and they've got a fight against sugar. It's really, really good. Honestly, it's great. Yes. But we're gonna listen. So getting back to the gut, we'll do a whole thing next week on the gut next yeah. Monday, hey? And I recommend yeah. everyone does a gut test. If you're going to invest in anything, do a gut test because we'll, we'll talk all about candida, which can take over your brain because it's, it's a fungus that can literally tell your brain to eat more sugar. You could, be having, you could be controlled by an actual fungus that's living in your gut and it goes straight up your back into your brain via the gut-brain axis and it's actually telling you to eat more sugar because that's its food source. It's fascinating it could you know and that could be your blood yeah it's very problems. useful in some of them you know so it's like you know you can look at candy you can look at the different bacteria and the things that you've got and actually in the 360 there's a new stool test that i do with clients and we can actually see as well which natural antimicrobial antifungal could work to kill off that particular parasite or bacteria as well so it's um Brilliant. really useful Fantastic. Um, we'll do, that. Do, you, do you normally do the uh, Genova Diagnostics stool test? Is that, a, use, no, is that a three I, day one? I use doctor's data. So I work with a lab called Regenerous, um, yeah. and they're the ones who do the Dutch test as well. So that's the lab I work with. And um, I like that it's the, quite a new test. It's called their 360 test, which has just um, got a lot more information in. So I really like that one. Um, I've still got mine oh, sitting. I was supposed my... to do it six months ago, and I still haven't done it, actually. Um, I mean, but, I, yeah. I, I, I want to do another one as well. I, I love poo tests. I know I do. I just haven't got round to doing it. It's just I sort of, you know, just going to do it, really. Um, and I, I mean, can, I can children do tests. tests as well? But they've got microbiome slightly different to ours, isn't it? Who's that, sorry? Children. Yeah, so mine did it ages ago, but um, I've got no reason for them to particularly do it at the moment. There's no particular symptoms, so I don't feel they need to do it. But remember, our, you could do a test today, and in five days' time, that you know it's going to be different. So our microbiome changes all the time. We change our yeah. diet slightly. We change it in 24 hours. In the next day, yeah, it's different again. So it is a snapshot in time, but can be very useful if you have gut symptoms. If you don't have gut symptoms, well, I mean, I don't think it, it's particularly necessary. Um, uh, but it does, you know, help us understand, well, do you need probiotics or do you need to kill off sort of bad bacteria? Um, you know, what, what, what's right for you? Talking of probiotics, um, there is this uh, probiotic, well, it's actually been out for about a year now. That's a really good one for women and helps with things like urinary tract infections. But it's called Women's Essential. We'll get this one on tomorrow, Davinia, won't we, on your post? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so Women's Absolutely. Essential, but it's a particularly good one for women, um, particularly around sort of our age, but um, it's good to um, help sort of with this um, bacteria called beta glucuronidase, which can inhibit estrogen. It can cause estrogen to go circulating right back around again. So I think it's quite a nice perimenopausal probiotic, I suppose. Okay, so we're going to do next Monday, we'll talk all things gut related. Yeah, quick, because we'll we've that. got a couple of minutes and that's all. Okay. Uh, weight gain after hysterectomy. Yes, again, because um, now oestrogen really does help regulate the metabolism. So, of course, as soon as your, all your sort of oestrogen levels drop um, and your adrenals, of course, are, are supposed to take over. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that is something. So, you know, it might be that you need a natural female glandular 
um, but I would also be looking at the impact that um, that has had on the thyroid and the adrenals as well. Remember, we were talking yesterday, it's sort of like this little symphony, this orchestra, they all work in harmony. So I think always looking at not just estrogen, but what's happening with thyroid, what's happening with adrenals. So it's that balance. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I mean, we should do another whole post again. I mean, a whole Insta on perimenopause, menopause. Yes. Yeah, hormones. I think we'll just have a hormone. We'll do a hormone. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a hormone diet related. Um, yeah. Underactive thyroid and weight gain. Yeah, very common, very common. And that's how sometimes I can even sort of gauge that somebody might have an underactive thyroid is because they tried to lose weight and they can't. So again, um, if you're on thyroxine already, maybe it's not doing its thing. Um, maybe try, look at a you know, DNA test. Maybe it's the problem is your conversion from T4 to T3. Maybe that's the issue. Maybe it's not getting into your cells. So then we need cell membrane support. Um, so, yeah, so I don't know this person whether they're on thyroxine or not. If they are, then it's obviously not doing enough of its job. Yeah. Back to the drawing board. And you'd recommend in that case, get a Dutch test. Uh, I actually, for, for thyroid, obviously you do sort of the blood testing, so it's quite good to sort of get, obviously they're with their doctor, you know, perhaps they've done all the blood testing any, anyway. If they have, that's when it's good to look a little bit further, and I would say the DNA thyroid report. Right. And, and so, you could go through that with her, couldn't you? Yeah, and then I go through, through um, you know, through it after. But yeah, if you've already got all the blood tests and things like that, you're on thyroxine, still not working, then the next stage you might want to look at... Um, at the DNA thyroid test. Superb. Now, how about postmenopausal lack of energy? What would you do with that? Because, I mean, this is like so many different things that are causing it, not just bad sleep. Yeah, again, because, um, you know, it puts an awful lot of burden on your adrenals, um, you know, sort of lack of estrogen, because then your actually adrenals have to take over and they have to, you know, produce these sex hormones. So if you're already a little bit stressed and um, energy output's already a bit low, then it just puts a whole load of pressure on that system. So um, I think things like that's where I think actually obviously hugely important, you've got enough protein, you've got enough healthy fats as well. Um, but I would also look at, um, yeah, I would also look at sort of not only sort of balancing the adrenals and things like that, but um, yeah, probably something like stabilium. It would be nice because that's actually good for energy. It's not. It's good for balancing cortisol, but it's a nice energy supplement. Um, so that one might be nice. But you might actually need an adrenal glandula. So that is, you know, like, um, you know, giving yourself some adrenal hormones. So that might be something that would be lo worth looking at. All right, then. Well, Pip, thanks again so much for your expertise and your insights and listening thank to you. my podcast as ever. Guys, thank you for joining us this evening. If you've got any more questions, you can DM me or Pippa and get in touch with her on her website. She's also giving away 50% off her seven-day reset diet, which you can download. You can do it in your home now, which is a great way to kick those cravings to the curb once and for all. You may as well invest in yourself while you've got the time and the focus. So we'll see you again Monday next week, and we're going to talk all things gut-related. And again, any other questions, just let us know, and we will, of course, get to, get to answer them for you. Thanks again for joining us. And Pippa, see you in the fog. Bye, guys. Bye.